Hello everyone. In this session, we will be studying about the microcontroller 8051. What exactly it consists of and what are its pin structures. So consider this as your first session for 8051 controller. So let's get started. There are some pins labeled P1.0, 1.1, 1.2 up to 1.7. Then there is a pin RST, then again P3.0, 2, 3.7. Crystal XTL2, XTL1 pins ground. Then 2.0 to 2.7, 0, 0.0 to 0 0.7, some control pins and VCC. So this is the 40 pin IC. Remember one thing, whenever we purchase a microcontroller IC from market and if you install it in any kind of system, it will do absolutely nothing. Okay. So why it does nothing is because the microcontroller has just some plain pins open. We have to give some input outputs to them as well as we have to write down a software inside that microcontroller which can process those inputs or outputs. So blank controller is useless, it has no value. And what we are going to study now is how or these are the two major aspects of a microcontroller study, the hardware and the software, we will see them both. The elements of microcontroller generally are CPU that is central processing unit, I.O. or the elements of microcontroller generally are CPU that is central processing unit, I.O. or input output, buses, address and data bus, the memory elements present inside the microcontroller are RAM and ROM. ROM is usually replaced by flash memory these days which is a non-volatile memory. Timers interrupts, serial port and parallel port. This parallel port is nothing but the same I.O. port or input output port. Every microcontroller has those aspects or those different elements. We have seen in last session about the comparison between microcontroller and microprocessor. Let's see it in a detailed version. Microprocessor is standalone and everything is separate. Controller, inside a controller, CPU as well as RAM, ROM and other peripherals are present onto the single chip. The processor is uh, completely designed for expandability. So RAM, ROM and I.O. ports can be extended. With controller, those can't be extended. Microprocessor is definitely expensive, versatile, can be used for general purpose and many different applications. Whereas microcontroller is cheaper, but it's for single purpose and for applications in which cost, power and space. Everything is very much critical. This is the block diagram of 8051 microcontroller. And this is what makes the 8051 very, very simple to understand. Why? If you look at the block diagram, there are so few blocks. There are very less number of blocks present inside 8051, which makes it very easy to study and understand and get used to immediately. See. A classic 8051 does consist of an internal bus to connect four I.O. ports. I.O. means input output ports. The label or the name of these four I.O. ports are P0, P1, P2 and P3 which are short forms of port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3. Then there is a serial port which has two lines TXD and RXD. There are two timers. Both of them can be used as timers as well as counters. The name of them are timer 1 and timer 0. And then there is some on-chip RAM. In classic 8051, the on-chip RAM present was 128 bytes. Nowadays, depending upon which processor or which controller exactly you are using, the on-chip RAM as well as on-chip ROM will vary. The flash or on-chip ROM for program storage in 8051 was 4 KB. Now in different microcontrollers, you will find different sizes. Then there is a CPU along with an interrupt control unit and an on-chip oscillator. Remember, although the oscillator is on-chip, we need to connect an crystal externally. And what you see here, all these are the blocks present inside the IC. It's not external. Okay. So that's the block diagram or architecture of 8051. This is also called as architecture of 8051. In a data sheet, you will find a detailed architecture like this, but that's nothing different than this and it can be followed for a clear understanding. So this is the pinout of 8051 and now we'll study the pinout in detail. 
here itself you can see pin number 40 and pin number 20 are power pins pin number 40 goes to vcc and 20 goes to ground pin number 9 is a reset pin xtl2 xtl1 are pins where we have to connect crystal along with pin number 40 pin number 31 is needed to be connected to vcc ale and pscn can be left alone the microcontroller works on plus 5 volt so a plus 5 volt DC supply has to be given to pin number 40 which is VCC. Pin number 20 is to be connected to the ground or negative of the DC supply and we have to connect a crystal between XTL2 and XTL1 exactly like this. See there is a capacitor which is mandatory to be used with crystal. Remember although the symbol is showing like this we can use a ceramic capacitor over here from a value which is between 20 picofarad to 40 picofarad usually 22 picofarad or 33 picofarad are easily available in market so you can use those two crystals then there is a reset pin the reset pin needs a signal a positive signal whenever the microcontroller gets powered on that's why we need a power on reset circuit the reset pin whenever microcontroller is powered on should be high for at least two machine cycles and that is why the reset circuit created will have a capacitor inside it so this is the reset circuit first we had this clock circuit connected now we have this reset circuit connected you can see a 10 microfarad capacitor along with a 8.2 k resistor goes to ground the middle point of this goes to reset so whenever the system starts off or powers on what happens is the capacitor acts as a short circuit vcc gets completely connected to reset and the controller will go into the reset state then through this resistor this capacitor will slowly charge and once it's completely charged once it attains the 5 volt signal the connection from this point of vcc is completely lost and now this point is connected to ground through this resistor we get a very short pulse of reset whenever we are powering on this microcontroller system and that's what exactly we want. So this is the power on reset circuit of 8051. EA pin is an external pin with number 31. It was used only when 8031 and 32 were used. So it is not used anymore. So you can just skip this. PSEN is also program store enable is used when you are downloading the program using some external hardware. So we generally don't use these pins which are pin number 29 and pin number 30 ALE. EA needs to be connected to VCC. Then pin number 30, 29 and 31 are gone. Then these are pin number crystal pins. Pin number 9 is reset, 40 and 20 are power pins. What remains are the four IO ports. Port 0 which is divided from pin number 39 to 32. Port 1, port 2 and port 3 each port has eight pins so you can see all in all we have a total of 32 input output pins available for interfacing the real world peripherals with 8051 out of these each port can be used as digital input or digital output which is a bi-directional operation hardware structure of this io pin is very interesting to understand because when we write down logic 1 onto a particular pin, plus 5 volt or VCC appears onto that pin. And whenever we write down logic 0 onto a particular pin, 0 volt or ground potential appears onto that particular pin. And how it happens? There is a D latch associated with every single pin of the port. So you can see if this is the pin out, then there is a D latch with every port pin. So there are total. 32 D latches present inside the 8051 with port. How do they work? Let's see. This is the D latch, a typical D latch, where whatever is the input appears at the output whenever a clock pulse is given, and whatever is the input appears inverted on the other output whenever the clock pulse is given. The operation of a port is exactly like this there is a D latch whose Q bar output is connected to a transistor and there is a pull up resistor connected to this transistor. If you don't give anything to the input of this transistor, what happens is the transistor will remain in off condition and the VCC will as it is appear onto the pin. Now 
how we write down logic 1 onto this particular pin let's see whenever we write logic 1 we write it through the internal bus to the B input of this D latch ultimately what happens is Q output will be 1 and Q bar output will become 0 since Q bar output is 0 this transistor will be in off state and since it is in off state there is no conduction and the same VCC exactly appears as it is on the port pin. So when we give 1 from the software onto the D latch Q bar becomes 0 and because of this 0 and because of this pull up resistor we get a VCC or 5 volt voltage onto this pin. At the same time now when we write down 0 to the pin see what happens. Whenever we write down 0 the D in latch input gets 0 and ultimately Q will become 0 and Q bar will become 1. Because Q bar is 1 now the transistor will be conducting the transistor is forward bias and it is conducting. So the current flows from VCC load towards the ground inside the transistor uh, inside the transistor of port pin and therefore what we get at this pin is ground or zero potential. That is how we write down logic 1 and logic 0 onto a port pin. When it comes to reading a particular port pin it goes exactly like this but remember one thing always whenever we are reading from a particular port pin we have to give logic 1 to the input of D latch so that we have to give logic 1 to the input of D latch so that the Q bar output becomes 0 and the transistor is in the off state. So whatever input comes from external world to this pin is directly read by this latch and given to the internal data bus. So it appears like that whenever we are reading input. Never make the port pin go 0 when you intend to read it as input pin. Same thing goes when logic 0 is detected no change at all. Got it? So th that is how port pins are operated and we can see here we saw that there is a transistor and then there is a pull up resistor associated with this transistor. With port 1, 2 and 3 these pull up resistors are present internally but with port 0 the pull up resistor is not available internally and that is why the port 0 pins looks like this. Even if I give 1 or 0 onto this pin whatever comes at Q bar 0 or 1 there is nothing going to happen the transistor will not turn on it will not also turn off and you experience literally no potential onto this particular pin. And that is why with port 0 for every pin we need a pull up resistor to be connected with port 0 externally. You can see this kind of pull up resistors are connected externally to port 0 on every 8051 based system. And for increasing the current output the other ports are sometimes also given with such kind of external pull ups. Again in the block diagram we had seen that P0, P1 and P2 are the two, three ports available for usage. Port 3 pins is multiplexed with some different functions like 3.0, 3.1 with serial port that is RxD, TxD, 3.2, 3.3 is INT0, INT1 that are interrupt pins, timer pins and bus write and read pins. So those are the alternate functions of port 3. So that is it about the pin out of the 8051 microcontroller. I hope you have understood how we studied about how one is connected or how one is applied at the output pin of controller and how zero is given to the pin of controller. From the next session on what we will do is we will start writing down a software for 8051 and start observing its output. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much.